Hey guys, what's going on? Hold up now, let's just chillax and watch a top 10 here. I mean, that's what I'm thinking, right? That's why you click on the video? Yeah, okay, so top 10s are fun. Top 10s are fun, but this top 10 is, is gonna actually be a little bit more sad and tragic compared to others, you know? Normally, I like to do upcoming games, hype games, you know, talk about, discover new games, but I wanna, every once in a while, just go back, kinda look back at some games that maybe you have missed. You know, maybe, maybe as a community, as a whole, a gaming community, we have just kind of overlooked these games, and that's what this top 10 specifically is gonna be about. It's gonna be the top 10 best free-to-play that nobody plays. <laughs> yeah, truly tragic here indeed. These are 10 games that I personally have played and found extremely enjoyable. I think many people really have had fun with these games and left for one reason or another, and they just didn't work out. For some reason, they're just not really being played right now and completely at risk of being canned completely. In fact, there's a lot of games that I, when I was making this list and uh, I had to take them off the list because they actually did get canceled. Rest in peace, Nosgoth. So, here we go. Let's start the list. We're gonna go fast and furious. Don't wanna, you know, drag on too much because it is kind of a drag. But let's talk about Happy Wars at number 10 here. Happy Wars is a game you can actually get on the Xbox Live Arcade as well as on Steam. And it's kind of like this, like, melee, massively multiplayer, big team battle sort of uh, combat simulator thing. It reminds me of, like, Battlefield where, like, melee. Like, have you ever played Battlefield Heroes? Kind of like that, but, like, just melee. So, you have, like, different classes. It kind of looks extremely cutesy and everything. And there's, like, castle sieging and stuff. And, yeah, it, it's pretty cool. Big team battle battle combat, melee magic, and you know, it, it's it's just, it is what it is. And at the same time, it, I felt like it was really polished and maybe people were turned off by the art style. I thought it was really cute and endearing. I thought it gave the it sort of like a timeless quality to it, in my opinion. A lot of really fun cosmetics and a lot of different classes. There's a lot of different mechanics to the game that I thought it was just, it, it should have held up, in my opinion. And especially with the promotion with Xbox Live Arcade and all that good stuff, I guess it just, I don't know, it just wasn't what people were looking for. In fact, a lot of games in that vein, that sort of like melee combat simulation, big team battle simulation, really haven't uh, turned out that great. And I was thinking maybe the free to play version of that genre would do great and it just didn't. So, tragic. Next up, we have Gotham City Imposters. Gotham City Imposters was definitely right on the heels of Team Fortress 2, definitely completely in vain, and there were many games coming out that were really trying to go for this uproarious, comical action uh, with, you know, first-person shooters. Sort of supposed to be like this team-based shooter thing, and this was in the heyday of Call of Duty, so a lot of people were playing Call of Duty games or Counter-Strike-like games, so a lot of serious games, and Team Fortress 2 really held down the fort with being cartoony. Now, a lot of YouTubers were getting into these cartoony games, and I know Gotham City Imposters sponsored a lot of streamers and YouTubers, but for some reason, like, they just didn't keep up with the polish, I think. Like, it just couldn't keep up with Team Fortress 2, for one, and then the competitive scene with all these other games. It, it just didn't work out. They kind of just fell through the cracks. They were just too casual, and of course, their art style, you know, made it abundantly clear that they were trying to aim for a casual crowd. But still, you know, people just, they didn't play it. I, I don't know. I don't know, it was just probably missing one mechanic or two, a couple of polished features, just, there was just missing a few things, and it was just, you know, they came, these kind of games came out during a very competitive time, and so they just kind of have been on the back burner ever since, and have been burning slower and colder. Next game I want to talk about is APB Reloaded. APB Reloaded, in my opinion, probably had one of the worst launches ever, but it really, I think, rectified the situation. It became a really fun game, and I played it a couple of times. It, it's very interesting. It, it's basically Grand Theft Auto Online before Grand Theft Auto Online was a thing. Now, honestly, Grand Theft Auto is a much deeper, bigger game, but still, even though I own Grand Theft Auto V, I still every once in a while want to jump into APB Reloaded because it is a free-to-play game. It does have really cool, fun customization and really easy to jump into and jump out gameplay with open world questing that is completely PvP focused. It, it's decent. I, I know that it has problems and it has had a, a, a really rough launch, but still, it was a cool game. It is a good game. It's got some of the best character customization I've ever seen. It's got some really interesting social mechanics and yet, it doesn't matter. This completely social game kind of is waning because there's not too many people playing it, so it's not that social anymore. Ah, next game I wanna talk about is Dragon Nest. Dragon Nest is actually pretty freaking popular in the East, um, but the problem is, is that it's not that popular in the West, and I think it's the art style. It's, it's, it's not just the uh, chibi. Also, it, the graphics don't really look that uh, good or polished. It's definitely showing its age, but the thing is, is that Dragon Nest, physically, mechanically, its game feel 
is completely, in my opinion, superior to Vindictus, which I think is a little bit more popular, though not super popular. A Dragon Nest is really more of an online action RPG that has some of the most intense physics-based combat that I have ever experienced. Its dungeons are extremely challenging, and I think there might be some complaints with endgame pay to win. I don't really know or feel those complaints, and the arenas are always interesting to play. I really love the team-based combat, and the classes were really interesting as well. You actually have like this class dynamic where you can split off and do different branches. You know, you start as a warrior, and then you can go with a different like a swordsman, or you can use a hammer, like a mercenary. And then you have all these different classes that are extremely unique. I wouldn't, I don't know if you can even call them classes. They're more like characters. They're they're very unique. Uh, and the customization is still there. I mean, yeah, but it's a little bit limited. But because of the unique classes, or what I would consider characters. You have very unique physical interactions inside the game world and different party members. Uh, it's very enticing, I think, to Eastern players, but I think Western players really like much more customization with their classes and overall prefer an open, more open world. So, but as an online action RPG, it is truly fantastic. In my opinion, absolutely has the best action combat in any game. Next, let's talk about Dirty Bomb. This is actually an incredibly recent game. Most of these on the list are gonna be older games. Dirty Bomb, kind of just came out, but nobody's really playing it because it's kind of marketed as a hero shooter. And there are other free to play hero shooters that I think are really abysmal. Uh, and then there are some coming out that are really good. And Dirty Bomb is a good game. Obviously, it's on this list. It's a really good game. I think it's actually pretty polished, but it made some design decisions that uh, were it's kind of it, it really fluctuated the game state just too dramatically. So there was a lot of hardcore players, a lot of streamers, a lot of people who are playing Dirty Bomb getting ready for Overwatch. Um, and they also, there's a couple of other games like Black Ops 3 is a new hero shooter and then the new um, Rainbow Six. A lot of people were playing Dirty Bomb because they kind of thought it was, you know, it'd be like practice, you know, different characters, different kits, stuff like that. And then people started falling in love. However, the de developers kind of made some decisions that changed a lot of the mechanics that we liked, um, trying to rectify things that we didn't like. And it just, in the end, kind of felt really weird. Also, the payment scheme, uh, collecting the cards and everything also kind of felt weird overall. Like, Dirty Bomb just made a lot of small decisions that kind of rubbed its community the wrong way. And so its community dwindled. But overall, it's still a really great game. In, in fact, right Right now, it might be in an amazing state, other than the fact that not many people play it. Okay, now here's an older FPS. This is actually during the heyday, uh, in my opinion, of when free-to-play games were coming out with really crazy original ideas uh, consistently. Like, this was gonna be when free-to-play games was like the next big thing. Like, AAA free-to-play games were coming out, and Blacklight Retribution was gonna be one of those games. Now, you can play this game on PS4, and it's more or less kind of like the same game. It's actually, in my opinion, completely playable on consoles. Now, I play it on PC, and I have hundreds of hours in the game, and yet, even though I have hundreds of hours in this game, and I, this is the first free-to-play game I ever spent money on, I still do not have a completely loaded out character. That is how expensive it is to even get one single character, you know, geared up to play the game competitively. It has the most amazing customization of your character, of your weapon that I've ever seen in any game, period, AAA or not, and yet, because it costs so much, you don't really get to access that. It's got a, it's got really amazing mechanics, and other than Quake, it's probably the best free-to-play game to actually play 1v1 because of the whole visor thing where you can see through walls. It just makes it really fair, anti-camping. There's so much customization, the team play is amazing. Um, there's really unique game modes with its like siege game mode, which is like payload, except you actually man the tank as you push it. Uh, dude, there, there's so many unique facets to this game, and even now, it still kind of looks decent, especially if you play on PS4, it definitely has parity with other free-to-play shooters on there, or just shooters, period. It looks decent. And the problem is that nobody freaking plays it, probably because it's too expensive. And now here's a game that I am completely, like, flabbergasted. I, I have no idea why if it's failing or failed. Uh, there's a, it's called Hawken. Now when Hawken was first coming out, this was at the same time as Blacklight Retribution and some other free-to-play games like I've been talking about. Um, this just like, it blew up so bad because it was, it was really graphically amazing. And everyone wanted to play it, but it like, I don't know, like people jumped into it and then they felt uncomfortable because, see here's the thing, it looked amazing. And like, it's cool to watch gameplay kind of, but when you're actually playing the game you get a little bit of a disorientation because it's, it's a mech game, but it's actually, it definitely is a FPS, and it's kind of like a Call of Duty FPS, but you're like in this tank, and it limits your FOV, and you move really slow and sluggish, and so it doesn't, I mean, it, it definitely focuses on a weird niche, but it was kind of marketed as a mech game, and then some people thought it was going to be like a super fast-paced shooter, but it's really not either of those, kind of, like it's not slow and strategic and tactical, like maybe something like Mech Warrior might be, 
Uh, it's somewhere in between. It really rubbed people the wrong way. Um, but it looked so good. It has a lot of originality. And I think if you can get into some games and play with that niche audience, you will have some fun. The problem is, is that this could have been such a big game if they just kind of marketed it a little bit better and maybe fine tune some game modes to really promote the mechanics that the game really should have been promoting versus, you know, uh, either slow paced gameplay or fast paced gameplay when it's really sitting in between. Should have really focused on objective type uh, game modes versus deathmatch. Okay, now at number three here, we have Tribes Ascend. Tribes Ascend, I, 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 these, these next three, I really had trouble, you know, fitting them in. I really like Tribes Ascend because, it, like, the, the actual feeling of playing the game is completely unique. You're not going to get it in any game, no matter how much money you spend. Uh, I guess you could go back and play some older Tribes games, but Tribes Ascend is the most modern one, and it is the one that at least some, you know, people are playing a little bit, kind of. Uh, there is a hardcore niche community, but back when I played, this was actually the game. This game actually got me a job at Free MMO Station, basically. Like, this is the the game that I really started doing um, YouTube videos on. I was really passionate about the game. I wanted to play competitively, and this is the FPS that really taught me how to play PC FPS. It was so fun. It had unique classes. It was basically a hero shooter, um, but also had all these other weird, unique facets to its gameplay as well because of the skiing and the physics and. It was such a hard game and it, it just really blew my mind how, you know, grindy they made it. Like, why did you make this free to play game so grindy? Of course, all that has basically been fixed um, and the balance is probably better than ever and its performance is better than ever probably, but it's just high res had a lot of issues with their monetization with their previous games and then Tribes Ascend, it was almost great. Um, it got a lot of publicity, especially because of Total Biscuit covering it, but it just, you know, they just didn't get it quite right. Now with Smite, they rectified it instantaneously. The Smite free-to-play model is perfect. Smite, you know, is not a perfect game, but the, you know, who they're, the audience that they're targeting and their monetization is perfect. So, you know, eh, yeah, eh, they kind of went with Smite. Now next up is Block and Load. And Block and Load's troubles is also gonna be monetization. In fact, most of these games, their issues has been monetization issues. Uh, how much it costs to get into the game, to do end game, if it's pay to win, how much it, it takes to really enjoy yourself. That is very often the case in these games. If they were truly completely free, all of these games honestly would probably still be very popular, but obviously you can't do that. You need to have some monetization scheme. Block and load was going to be a buy to play game. It was never going to be a free to play game. Um, so yeah, whenever it went free to play, it's monetization. Like it's a it's a character hero shooter. Um, but it kind of costs a lot to you know rank up and get the heroes and the balance of the game. It, it feels like you really need certain heroes certain at certain times. It's I don't, I don't know. It, it just it doesn't feel that great as a new player when you can't play the character that you want and it is pretty limiting. I think you can do a lot if if they kind of change the monetization just a little bit. If they had maybe something like Smite. I mean, Smite does it pretty right. Or Paragon, you know, you have these tiered entrances. Like, yeah, you could be a free to play player or you could spend 20 bucks to get the whole game. That'd be pretty freaking great. Um, Overall, I think it'd be a lot easier if these games weren't as grindy, but Block and Load is, is freaking amazing if you just want to jump in and try something totally unique. Minecraft with guns, basically. Super cool. Now, the last game I want to talk about is a game called Wildstar, which, again, had monetization issues. Now, they were trying to compete with World of Warcraft, um, but the problem with that is they didn't have the content of World of Warcraft, which no game ever will ever, because Blizzard's huge, World of Warcraft is huge, and that's just not happening. Even though Wildstar probably launched, um, also, also probably with more content than World of Warcraft launched with, um, the problem was that its optimization wasn't that great, and there were some other issues, and its story wasn't as endearing as the original World of Warcraft was. So it probably should have launched just as a free to play game to begin with. Now, some games go free to play because that's how they're going to accelerate their growth, um, not because they're failing. But Wildstar definitely went free to play because they were failing. Uh, uh, and and the games can come back from that. Wildstar might actually come back from that. But right now, not many people are playing it, even though it's free, even though it's got a lot of content, even though it's an incredibly polished game. Now, there is so much to do. There is a lot of uniquity with the game in every facet. I could talk about it forever. I could do a whole video on it, but it just, nobody's really playing it because you miss the hype and the point of online games especially massively multiplayer online games is you want to play with lots of people so the less people you have basically the less product you have it just it's just tragic because they're good decent games and there's lots of games out there that have failed uh, similarly they just you know pe people like Dongate they're like what Dongate was a game that looked pretty cool kind of wish Dongate was around so I could play it Nosgoth um, Lego minifigures uh, some games actually are leaving free to play basically because they, they just, they will fail and they can't keep up the server. So they need some money. So 
but they're scrounging for it. So, you know, Lego minifigures is one of those games as well. Um, I know Atlas Reactor actually was free to play and then buy to play and then free to play. So yeah, um, it's just, that kills games guys. That kills games cause it, it puts a schism in the community and it's just broken, man. It's sad, makes me want to cry. But I'm not gonna cry because there's lots of new games coming out and I did, at least when I played these games, I had fun and I enjoyed them. I'm just kind of sad that more people aren't gonna enjoy these games or the sequels to these games and we might not see games similar to this even though they're good games because of their marketing and how they were um, designed you know, around their free to play or whatever, you know, their business model. So, yeah. Okay, just a casual top 10. Just wanted to say that guys, just wanted to talk at your faces. Thanks for watching, I'm Skylant. I really do like free to play games often. I, I like playing games period. These are some good free to play games. And if you played them, leave your stories in the comments below. And I'm really tragic for those who didn't get to play these in their, you know, prime. Because that's what online gaming is all about, really, is uh, is the event of it all. So thanks for watching. I'll see you guys again next time.